I think I'm like all or nothing. I am a hard worker. That's what I would say that's really a big thing in my tennis career. If I really, really want something in my life, I did it. I'm Dominika Sibokova and this is my story. My parents, they really had to sacrifice a lot. And, and when I was 10 years old, my father, he stopped uh, going into work and he was just with me every day, coming with me to the practice. And he was driving me to Bratislava and back. And after one year of traveling like this, my parents decided let's buy an apartment in Bratislava and let's uh, make it make the better conditions for Domi. No. Bolo to ťažké rozhodnutie, ale museli sme to urobiť kvôli Dominike, pretože mala rada tenis. A do hlavného mesta sme došli kvôli, kvôli tenisu, lebo tu sa to zgrupovalo, to, to centrum tenisové. Takže ja som s ňou prišiel do Bratislavy a postupne potom prišla aj maželka. This was cool when I spent so many hours of practicing, when I was 10, 11, 12. 14 years old. Now when you look at it, it's like funny moments, you know, like nothing in your career. And yeah, so in this court I practiced so much. A lot of people kept telling me, even when I came to this club, you're too little to play, you're too small, you will never play professional tennis. I was just like, what the, you know, what the hell, I just want to play tennis. That was the court number eight and uh, I used to sit here so many hours and then from this court I got to that court and I was like, oh good, you know, I made it. When I always come here, it's memories all over. I was always a hard worker. I just came on a court and even I felt lazy that day or I felt it's too hot or I felt like I don't want to practice because my friends around there are just playing around. When I entered the court, for me it was okay, now I do this and I do it 100%. When I was younger, I was always 100% just tennis. Yes, when I started something, tak to robila na 100-110 A k tomu sme ju aj viedli a čo v konečnom dôsledku bol aj jej základ k tomu, kam sa dostala v tenise. My home is here. My father, he wanted me to go to, to practice to America, to Florida, to some academy. And I was like, no, I want to be home. Like, I don't want to be away from home for like three months. I cannot do this. Maybe it's how I am and I never wanted to be away from home so long. Even I travel now the tournament, I always kept coming back home to Bratislava. And now, of course, with my husband, we have a, a home here. I have my friends and I have like a normal life back home in Bratislava. And that's what I really, really appreciate because I know it's, uh, it's not usual on tour to have a, like a normal life away from tennis. I feel sometimes like Jekyll and Hyde because on the, on the court, you know, I'm 100% sport. I don't mind how I look and I don't mind if I'm sweaty or whatever. I never used any makeup on the court, but off the court. And when I can go for a nice dinner or if we go out or a nice event, I love to have a makeup and hair. I think everybody likes different things, stuff and whatever. Somebody likes to, you know, hiking. <laughs> and I just, you know, like nice clothes. I like fashion. Even when I was little, I, I loved to have like nice dresses and, and uh, you know, to go into school. I was always, what I was wearing was ridiculous. You know, I always wear this like um, pink, purple dresses and, and yeah, you know, I, I always love my kind of fashion. We wouldn't want to get married anywhere else. This is the actual entrance into the church, the car pulled up here and I was just, and I had such a big uh, dress. She's a lovely person and she, she has a good heart and she doesn't have any problems with nobody and she's like easygoing person. He was nervous and he told me he was nervous and then he didn't see my dress before so when he saw me he was like <gasps> and yeah it was nice. We don't talk tennis, we don't talk tennis, it's no, no, no. But you know, sometimes when I feel down or when I feel mm, upset or I feel like, okay, now I'm afraid to go on the match or something, you know, I tell him. So this is our really only few times when we talk about tennis. He makes it easier for me sometimes. He said, I don't know, different things. And like, because when I talk with my coach about the match, you know, it's more about tactique and, and stuff like that. But like with Mike, I talk just simple things and he can make me, you know, feel more secure. I would say it's very important for us 
stay together. Sometimes it's hard when we are on trip like one month. It's better when we are together whole day, whole night, everywhere. He's that kind of person. He really don't don't care what anybody else thinks. He learned me a lot of this. So he always <laughs> says like, you know, only you know if you're happy and what everybody else thinks and what they say, it doesn't matter. So now I appro approach life this way. I'm so proud how she is, like a person, because she, she has a very good heart. For example, when she was uh, young, she would like to reach top 100 in women tennis, and she made it. And then step by step, it's going like top 20, top 10, and then she finished in 2016, number four in the world, and she won the Singapore. My whole life, the hard work I put in, I got back in 2016. You know, the I don't I don't know how to say like the the, the tennis gave it to me back everything in 2016. For me, it feels like that, and and yeah, it, it started uh, not good in in Australia, but then slowly I won uh, Katowice, then I played finals in Madrid, and before wedding, before wedding I was playing like crazy. I was playing really well. I won Eastbourne and I played. Um, the quarterfinals in, in Wimbledon, and then we got married in 2016. So after wedding, it was uh, it was Open Series, and then again, final in, in Wuhan, and then I just won Linz. It was, we were really fighting with Konta Kuznetsova to get on the Singapore. I got there, and yeah, I lost first two first two matches in Singapore, and I was like, oh my God, this is embarrassing. I just, please, I just wanna won one match. Please, I won a one match, so uh, you know I don't feel like I don't, I don't I don't belong here, you know, and I won the whole thing. Dummy dominates in Singapore. It was pretty amazing, and the Singapore talking still gives me goosebumps. And when I see the video, I can still. Make a, it makes me cry. The whole 2016 for me is like the, the best year ever with the tennis and on my uh, personal life. For me, it wasn't like, uh, I want to be number one. Mm, no, for me, it was like, okay, if I, like my parents, they told me like, they were thinking like, okay, if I get to 100, first of 100, for them, it will be okay. It was, um, how to say, it was worth it. And slowly, you know, slowly, I was there, and then I was top 50, and then I played my first semifinals when I was 19 years old at, at Roland Garros. And, you know, so for us, everything was so new, you know, like, wow, is this really happening? We had no goal to be top 10. The first trainer in the country, when she was in Czech, asked her what was her goal, and she said that top 200. And that was for us as a dream, unbelievable. A postupom času sa tam dostala. Playing finals of Grand Slam and being number four in the world and winning Singapore, it's just like a, it's not like a dream because it was not even in the plan. You need to follow your dreams, as I did, but you always need a support. It's not like, okay, I'm gonna, if I wouldn't have a support in my parents, I think we would never be here. So I think you you need that to follow your dreams. You need to be free to do it, but you need a, a support, either, a, I don't know, money support or a friend support or parent support. To si u nej vážim, to je taká zanietenosť do tenisu, že ho má ozaj rada. A som na ňu samozrejme hrdý, hlavne vtedy, keď, keď uvidím v televízii alebo v novinách, alebo keď sa s nami rozprávajú a chváliajú, tak vtedy si uvedomujem, že Dominika niečo dosiahla, niečo viacej ako ostatné deti. Takže robí mi to dobre a som na ňu hrdý. Pre mňa je najvýsledný vzpomínať, aby byť motivátor a ešte chcete vzpomínať to vzpomínať. To je najvýsledný vzpomínať pre mňa. Keď sa ktorý vzpomínať, čo chcete vzpomínať po tenis, vzpomínať, že nie vzpomínať, pretože vzpomínať, že vzpomínať, že vzpomínať, že 100% into tennis, so I I don't know what I will want to do or what opportunity will, will come to across my life. You know, I yeah I see myself as a mother, and um, and then and then I will for sure still be doing something. <laughs>